Thanks, guys. Thanks for uh, joining today. I'm uh, Vishwanath Jaka, part of Cisco, part of the Cisco uh, UCS Solutions team. Uh, today, I'll be talking about the joint effort that we have put together working between uh, Cisco, Red Hat, and Intel to offer a, a set of uh, solutions for our customers to use for deployment of containers using OpenShift. So uh, here I'm going to talk about how we can help you uh, help our customers uh, deploy uh, applications, develop applications in an accelerated manner. So before I mean uh, before I start, uh, let me uh, let me talk a little bit about how the industry is progressing. Uh, what is the dis digital transformation our customers are looking at? So as you see here, uh, so the slides are a little bit uh, uh, format is a little bit okay. Uh, so here the three axes that you can look at how digital transformation is happening across the data center for the businesses, both on-premise as well as on the cloud, when, when customers are having a uh, hybrid cloud uh, deployment. So if you go back a few years, it was all about bare metal. It was on-prem. It was uh, managed by a centralized IT team. Now, as things progressed, things have evolved into virtual machines and now containers. On the deployment side, the, it's a choice between on-premise, public cloud, and hybrid cloud as well. And in terms of management, it's all about the IT teams, the line of businesses, as well as the SVPs and the uh, DevOps teams. They are defining how things are consumed, developed, and deployed. And containers and microservices uh, play a big role in what the, how these things are happening. So with that, let me talk a little bit about what is the uh, industry trend, right? So as you can see here, oh, OK. So in terms of how the adoption is increasing, as you can see here, uh, uh, based on some of the uh, reports by Gartner and IDC, there's a huge amount of growth over the la next three years uh, in terms of container adoption, in terms of number of instances of containers that will be utilized for deploying the uh, web scale and microservice application. And there is, uh, in terms of uh, customer base, most of the enterprises, here I say 60%. However, since this survey was done, now the number has uh, even grown bigger. So roughly, now it's close to 80 to 85% of uh, enterprises. Either they're already using uh, containers and microservices already, or they're looking at adopting it in the next uh, 12 months. So uh, in terms of technologies, so uh, over a period of time, there have been multiple uh, orchestrators for, uh, uh, for containers. However, Kubernetes has taken the lead, and it's a leading orchestrator that is being used and uh, offered by multiple uh, vendors, including Red Hat, uh, OpenShift. So OpenShift uses uh, Kubernetes as part of the core uh, platform. And containers are used in multiple areas for your cloud native applications, for your DevOps uh, deployments, as well as for your platform as a service deployments. So with that, however, all this is good. However, it's not easy for a regular customer, right? It's uh, all cool and good. However, it takes a lot of effort, a lot of uh, uh, engineering skills required to deploy and manage. So that is this, uh, as you can see here, it's container management, ma monitoring, persistent storage on the technology side. But also on the deployment side, it's the complexity of deploying it. It is the complexity of uh, the management of it and trying to fit everything together. And then the le level of resources required to make things happen. So this is the challenge as well as the excitement that containers and microservices brings to the table. Customers want to do that, but they are hesitant to make it happen because of the challenges that, they are, that are out there. So with that in mind, Cisco, Red Hat, and Intel uh, work together to offer a set of joint solutions to make it easy to deploy, to make it easy to design, and customize to suit the business needs and application needs. So uh, our main goal here is to take the best out of the allable options and provide the best uh, suitable options for our customers. So from a uh, whole uh, stack perspective, we have the OpenStack uh, container platform. And we have we're using Kubernetes uh, orchestrator and the Docker runtime engine. And then we are leveraging Cisco's uh, infrastructure technologies, UCS, ACI, and Nexus, 
and also the uh, plugins that we have developed that I'll talk about in the next few slides, and working with Intel and working with the various automation uh, pieces out there, Ansible, Puppet, Chef, whatever the multiple options based on customer uh, interests and requirements. So, so with that, let me uh, talk about the two main uh, solutions that we are working together today uh, for our customers to use. Uh, so one is a software defined and bare metal deployment model on the left, uh, to your left. Uh, it's the uh, it's UCS for compute capacity, and for storage, it's also server-based uh, storage using LESRFS, software-defined storage, uh, running uh, open uh, open uh, shift uh, container platform. On the other side, we have hyper-converged offering, and with ACI or uh, Cisco's software-defined networking uh, offering. So ACI, Cisco HX, which is our hyper-converged uh, stack and running uh, virtual machines. So it's a open OpenShift uh, VMware with, uh, that's the hypervisor running on HX, then HX storage on the persistent storage side. So let me go into a little bit, uh, go into a few pieces that make up the solution, right? Let me talk about, I mean, uh, most of you should know, uh, probably know OpenShift. So I will shift the, uh, uh, skip the OpenShift space, but I'll talk about the UCS space that many of you may not be uh, familiar. So uh, some of the things that matter in a OpenShift container microservices uh, deployment is the elastic capabilities that you need across the stack. So with OpenShift and with the applications, you'll get that elasticity on the application side, but not so much on the infrastructure side. So that's where UCS uh, provides value uh, for, the, for our customers. As you can see here, UCS, it's not just a server, it's a system that brings multiple things to uh, table. It's endpoint aware, it's a 100% programmable infrastructure that fits right into the uh, DevOps model where customers or the application developers need the, uh, like the uh, uh, control of the end-to-end -end architecture. Then we have, uh, it's a fabric-centric architecture that brings compute, network, storage access, everything together under single uh, single management plane. And it provides a intent-based capabilities based on the technologies we have that we call as uh, service uh, profiles. So, uh, so using these various capabilities, you can build the uh, infrastructure that works best in a container and microservices environment. So let me uh, talk about a little bit about the individual pieces here for a bit. So when I talk about fabric-centric design, we are talking about both Ethernet and FC or storage traffic going into the single pipe. And however, it's all managed from a single point of management. It's all handled the same. And all the uh, packets go the same with limited connectivity. So single cable potentially can carry the whole load of uh, multiple servers, Ethernet, uh, storage, as well as uh, management traffic can all also go in one cable. So it makes it for easy uh, manageability from a physical perspective, but also from a management perspective. And also the density that we have built into these servers, it provides power and cooling savings as well. So in terms of uh, intent-based management, right? So we have the constructs that we call a service profile. It is essentially a software abstraction of the server identity. So server, a given server, there are uh, tens, close to 150 uh, attributes, like your IP address, like your worldwide name, like your management IP, and so on. All, typically, in a typical server, these are, those are hard burned into your server, whereas with UCS, it's a software-defined entity. So that provides you the flexibility when you're growing your business or optimizing your business or load balancing your business. So, and we have multiple uh, management points to help based on your uh, scale of deployment. It could be single site, it could be multiple sites, it could be across geographies, across continents. All this with UCS manager, central then director, and then with Cisco InterSite. That's our new uh, SaaS-based management plane that can uh, manage your complete uh, server portfolio across multiple data center, across multiple sites irrespective of the workloads and applications you're running. 
So this Intersight and UCS Margin General provides you flexibility to run your traditional enterprise applications, as well as your cloud native and web scale applications, all on the same platform using the same set of management capabilities. Okay? And like I mentioned, I uh, touched upon earlier, it's a completely programmable system. It's uh, all the APIs, all the actions, anything that you can do through command line or, you, or through the graphical interface, you can drive those actions through APIs. So we have APIs, uh, XML APIs, we have uh, bare, bare various SDKs, and we have modules in Ansible as well that is uh, used extensively in our uh, OpenStack and OpenShift solutions that we are jointly work together. So uh, the other thing is the endpoint, our virtual interface cards that lends the system itself well, irrespective of the type of deployment you have. Either it's a bare metal or virtual machine or containerized deployment, it works well across the board. So, so while talking about the container platform, so that's the uh, UCS system uh, overview. Now, how does it tie into the container and microservices offerings that we are having? So some of the questions that customers have when they are looking at deploying uh, containers is the various deployment models. Should it be bare metal or a virtualized deployment? Should they be using software-defined storage or hyper-converged storage? Or it's a native, use the native or traditional networking or use software-defined storage or ACI with the Cisco's option. So based on these various uh, questions and uh, design options that customers think about, based on these things, we have built a couple of uh, options uh, solutions to address for the same. So uh, so these are the two things I talked about earlier. So first of all, let me talk about, touch upon the uh, one, the bare metal and, uh, uh, and the software defined storage, and then I'll touch upon the hyperconverged and ACI one a little bit. So the, the reasons why UCS lends itself well, right? like as you can see, I'm not going to go through the whole, whole uh, 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 slide here. It provides a automated end-to-end -end automated capability for the physical, virtual, as well as the container and microservice architecture. It's completely automatable, completely manageable, and it scales and adjusts itself based on the requirements you have. And it provides, based on the uh, type of applications you want to run, it, we provide the options for persistent storage for our cloud native applications, okay? So on the bare metal and software-defined option, there are two options, two equipment options we offer. So on the left, it's more of your uh, enterprise production grade deployment for your uh, critical applications. So there is no single point of failure there, and it's uh, highly scalable, and uh, it's highly scalable and uh, manageable. Whereas on the right, you have a slightly uh, smaller configuration for customers who are looking at starting off new or looking at deploying a dev test environment where the uh, failure domain is not as critical. So it's this does this collocate some of the uh, core uh, controlling points on the same physical server. But however, if it's a dev and test environment, it's not it should not be that big of an issue for your deployments. So this is the bare metal and the uh, software defined uh, design that I talked about. The other option we have is on our Hyperflex, Cisco Hyperflex. Uh, platform, it's, uh, which is our hyper-converged infrastructure, where it provides a single pane of a single management space for your virtual infrastructure as well as the storage space. So here, th this is not only hyper-converged, but it's also in a ACI environment, which, which is our software-defined networking environment. So this provides the other options for our customers who are already on the journey of ACI or software-defined uh, networking and also interested in hyper-converged infrastructure. So this, once again, starts with a, uh, as you see there, one, uh, three to four nodes. It can go up to 64 nodes and beyond, depending on your scale. And the beauty of this is you don't have to have everything uh, uh, together on day one. You can start with the uh, bare minimum set of nodes, and you can grow as you go. So you don't have to design, uh, change the design. You just have to uh, bring in the new set of nodes, add it to the cluster, and you're off you go. So your designs can be uh, can be uh, good as your business scales and grows. So, so next as for my next steps, then uh, we are right here. Cisco, uh, stop by the booth. We have some demonstration 
and a deeper dive on the all, both the solutions that I talked about, talked about. and uh, furthermore, there are some giveaways that uh, we will hand out now as well. Uh, any questions? Uh, please, uh, please uh, uh, ask me. Uh, also, we have a detailed uh, breakout session tomorrow that goes into a little bit more further more details into UCS, ACI, and the joint solutions that we have, and um, yeah, and, and a few sites here for you to get additional information. With that, thank you. A any questions? Happy to answer you guys. Thank you. Thank you.